welcome to the Long Live Podcast, episode 8. I'm James Reardon Waters. This episode is titled, Don't Panic. <laughs> Don't panic, because um, <clears throat> lockdown was announced yesterday, and uh, it really kind of puts an image about the way things are into the hearts of people. I went out uh, yesterday to get on the medication, as is now closed at 8pm, and people were kind of a bit standoffish to say the least um there was yeah there was a man um, i ran into a friend of mine who was wearing this skull mask and it was you know is it legal to be outside and i just see him looking at me and i'm like who are you <laughs> and he came up to me and he took his mask off and i was like oh Raphael, how you doing so uh, yeah and then um, I ran into a friend, I ran into something, well, before that we ran into some guy who was like, I can't believe they're closed, and we began, you know, talking about the lockdown and everything, how it's a blessing in disguise, and all of that. I've got a fire on. I um, also spoke to, yeah, my friend who was like, you need money, because everyone's out of money, and it's just, it's very interesting to, uh, to see what happens. Um, I made a status yesterday about, well, you know, because this thing has a lot of, merits and blessings to it that aren't as obvious, you know, <clears throat> as, as you'd think with a pandemic. And I made a status about the danger of hyperinflated, saturated culture. And on Saturday, as I'll put a vlog up before the next podcast I do with someone else, because this is going to be unedited, I'm just going to be like, <clears throat> excuse me, just, you know, <clears throat> uh, free 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 verse as you would call that i don't know the word for it exactly but it's um very interesting because i was broken out of my natural routine and i went to the hills and we had we had watched the sunset because we wouldn't normally go there because normally go to the pub or go like you know do something that normal people do and then i just, we just there was loads of wood lying around so we decided to get some wood and uh, we were like a proper team because we couldn't do anything else. We couldn't do the regular thing that would happen on a Saturday. So we decided to, or was it Sunday? It might have been Sunday. I went to get, we went to get firewood. Um, and, uh, you know, people, you know, some of us were cooking, some of us were making fires, some of us were pouring drinks. And it was just like, it was cooperation to a much more liberal extent, I think. It was, you know, much more sort of genuine cooperation rather than cooperation to, uh, you know, the sort of false cooperation that you sort of see much more of these days on the internet, on, you know, workforces. And I was talking to Jack about this, and I don't know if I'm right, and I'm just, you know, it's just a monologue, so there's no, there's no way anyone can sort of jump in. Maybe Jack will jump in if he hears something he likes, but... Um, <clears throat> we, in a workplace, you're not really cooperating, you're... You're, you're, you know, you're all looking for the next promotion. You're all looking for a pay grade. At least it's not cooperation in the same way. Because, you know, it should be cooperation. But the thing is, is that the thing about work is that it's so bad you have to get paid to do it. <laughs> That's the thing about work, you know. It's like such a, you know, you know, imagine a job. Imagine doing something that you dislike so much that you have to be paid to do it. Which is why I think, you know, people that love their job will be happy to work more. Because, you know, well, obviously, but. You know, I think people who, you know, don't feel as if what they do relies on money actually is, uh, how do I say it, you know, they'll be willing to work 10 times as hard. Because it's not as, uh, because it's not nearly as. You know, you, don't, you know, because it's your, it's your project. It's your, it's, it's, it's your thing that you, you like doing, right? And we got a bit of firewood left. I may have to put, may have to shake up the fire a little bit. But yeah, we had, a <coughs> I had a fr I, I, I was gonna have a Anthony on today, but he couldn't make it because you know, just, just, just for general personal stuff. But like, he, we were having a very. We ha I wish I recorded the video that we did uh, on four a.m. at five a.m. We had we had this video call, and he spoke about. Um, you know, his anxieties and the thing about COVID-19 is that it's not going away in three months. As this, you know, people say to be indoors three months, but he said, <coughs> no way is it going to be, no way is it going to 
have that much time and then everything's going to be fine again. It's going to be years before we actually recover, if you want to call it that. But as the, we ran into, me and Raphael ran into some guy, he said it's a blessing in disguise. But, you know, the, 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 you know, me and Manny spoke about preparing for civil war and, I don't, and that, that isn't an intention to make anyone nervous because it's just, it's just that we have to prepare for whatever happens. You know, and 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 as as the thing is about history and all of that is that it's just so fucking unpredictable, right? It's so unpredictable to, to the extent that there, you know, there's no way to tell what's going to happen in the future. So maybe it's a civil war, maybe it's a anarchic revolution, maybe, uh, you know, <clears throat> but whatever. Or it could be completely fine in a year and everything goes back to normal because that's the way we want to do it. But you know, as the guy we ran into, then we didn't even know the guy that we ran into, but he said, you know, you, you know, people are, you know, people are more nervous, but they're so much more willing to strike up conversation because the sort of veil of we're separate people is lifted because we're both, we're all suffering through the same thing. We're all given reason to unite together, right? Um, I read a comic I follow existential comics. He's like a philosophy philosophy comic, and he said that it's never been more. You know, philosophers would, a philosopher would argue that it's never been more important to reflect on your moral values, which is actually something that I went over in the podcast a week and a half ago or so. <clears throat> yeah, it's been about two weeks since I've done a podcast, which isn't very good at me. But um, you know, I should do more because I've got patrons now, which is really good. And thanks to everyone who who has patron, who is who is a patron, who is a pledger right you know it's uh but it's crazy because like you know I'm, I'm also a magician piano teacher i'm event I'm, you know i occasionally do events and they're all out the window now i was going to do a punk gig in a library and now i can't do that because of, you know everything's on lockdown it's illegal for people to come to my house to uh to teach piano and i do magic at a bar and that's all gone tits up so you know it's it, it, and so so podcasting seems to be you know one of the only forms of legitimate revenue at this time um you know so i'm just trying to find the uh the patrons honorable mentions yeah yeah so at the end of the podcast i can still thank all the all the patrons for for signing up because this is going to be a bonus episode well you you'd already know that because you're you're you, you know if you the only reason you should be able to watch this if you are if you are a pledger so um yeah, it's just it's fucking nuts. <clears throat> but we've never been, as I said in my status, we've never been more free to, to uh, you know, to sort of exercise our own moral choices on 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 things such as like you know, you know the the, the you know the sort of fascistic structure of things has never been more weak, and not just for like capitalist purposes, but also everything else, you know. You know, like fascistic structures of all kinds, conceptual structures of all kinds. Um, you know, I was talking to my friend Liam, who wants to help me out money-wise. Which I, I said, I said I'd rather sell you something than get free money, considering I'm struggling. But <clears throat> which is, you know, was really nice of him actually. But um, you know, I, you know, I, um, we were talking about how, you know, some land, you know, while I don't particularly like landlords as a concept. <laughs> Maybe because I'm a tenant. No, it's not. It's not that. It's, 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 it, it, there's also this. Uh, there's also a general kind of distaste for people who just receive passive income from charging more for others. But then again, you know, you have to look at maintenance and all of that. And we're very lucky, me and Jack, to uh, have a place that ma maintains. You know, a place that like is regularly maintained, right? It's my last green tea. I got some Century green tea for my birthday in November, and uh, this is the last one, but it's fucking great. It's really good stuff. Um, so it's about negotiation, I think. <coughs> negotiation from landlords and and uh, and tenants, because you know if if, if the landlord's only source of income is is uh, renting and everyone refuses then you know he's out of pocket but I can't pay you know I'm, I'm, I'm very unsure how I'm going to pay next month's rent unless I just you know ask for money because like you know I, I, I've, I've been deprived of my income as a freelancer 
so <clears throat> that's you know the qu the big question is uh you know well it's not yeah the big question is uh what are we going to do and the answer in some ways okay. is negotiate <clears throat> and we've never had freedom of of social structures and and sort of conceptual structures to negotiate and you know like that's why I think the crux and this is what my book is about like anarchism of conceptual structures you know it's not like a, it's not it's not necessarily a lefty thing not necessarily a righty thing i'd say it's definitely a critique of authority but not authority of the sort of state kind but like sort of self-imposed authority right self-imposed authority of uh, you know of you know very rigid organizations of the world and they're very comfortable you know and 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 in the course in, and in the wake of the pandemic it's sort of you sort of notice how spoiled we are in our security, right? You know, we we are completely. How do I say it? Like, um, we can, you know, we can, we can, we have, we have, you know, we're completely safe and sound in 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 our conceptual structures because there's no risk. There's no risk to you know, to be courageous and to be brave and. To and to uh, step out and, 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 you know, make it, you know, like manifest your own destiny because there's never been a need to because we have everything, right? And, uh, you know, the pandemic is sort of teaching us that, you know, not only can we step up to the plate, but we can also step up to the plate in any way that we want to be. So, you know, if, if you know, and, and it's just, this, it's, it's a real, like, it's a real reflection of our own freedom, but not one that we were aware of. Now we're now, now we're now we're aware of, uh, of 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 our freedom. You know, <clears throat> if everyone decided not to pay rent, I'm not saying do that. But if everyone decided not to pay rent, there'd be no way to stop people from doing that. You know, if everyone decided to stop work, stop <clears throat> to simply stop working at Asda or Walmart, then Walmart would have to raise its wages because. There would be there would be an incredible demand of that thing, and this is something libertarians and socialists can both agree on that you know that if 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 conditions if work conditions aren't good, then <clears throat> you, you, we we have we have we have the freedom to simply not not even illegally protest or like strike, but just simply not work there. And you know, this is something that I was definitely sort of aware of after like you know. I think maybe psychosis has some part to do with it because it gives you a sort of freedom beyond kind of like rigid in interpretations of, uh, you know, interpretations of reality. Like, this is who I am. This is how I should function. This is how I win approval of other people because that's a given. And, uh, you know, this is how, you know, work should be, work should be relatively harsh and 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 something to endure you know and this gave me the ability to be like well you know i, I, I believe in that being having a being a valuable member of your community but i don't believe in the idea that you have to you know just you know you know suffer in order to in order to do something valuable at least not suffer in a meaningful meaningless way you know you can suffer and sort of like you know reflect on your own weaknesses and then and then improve that's that's a way that's a meaningful way of suffering but being in like a sort of bureaucratic system where <coughs> you, uh, you know, you, you're following guidelines because, you know, the bureaucratic system and the genealogy of it has, has, has brought it up to that point and you have absolutely no influence on that bureaucratic system. Um, you know, then, I don't know where I was going with this, but then, then there's definitely that ability to, you know, to say, well, hold on a second, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I don't have to work for you. And there's, there's, there's so much more, and I'm trying to. Th I'm trying. There's so many more ways in which we can exercise our freedom in the wake of the pandemic through, through automated choice. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to think of uh, other ways. You know, there's landlords that's refusing to work at other places. There's um, God, there's, it's 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 one of those you don't even know where to begin because there's just, there's just so many, right? <clears throat> you know, there's um, yeah, there's so many. It's just like, you know, I'm going to choose to, uh, you know start a business i think that's where i was going with it you know like I, I chose to sort of you know be a little inventive with freelance work and then decide to follow that 
you know you can you know if you don't like where you live then move if you don't like who you socialize with then refuse to socialize with them if you don't like what food you eat then then change your food if you don't like feeling bad for eating meat then don't eat meat if you don't like um you know if you don't like being with a significant other then don't be with them they're really you know and I, I and I do I do really think that we are I do really think that we are pressured not by society I don't think it's society that pressures us into into doing these things because society can be interpreted in a multiple different ways I think it's conceptual structures and this is what the book's about and it sounds very wishy washy for those who aren't aware that I'm writing a book and nearly I've nearly finished it actually but um <coughs> conceptual structures basically it refer to sort of um, patterns of thought of logical language based thought that refer to reality in a specific way and they're not entirely logical because they come with their own con context and assumptions and what I call conceptual packages but um, these these lo these uh, logical forms of thought um, that are very much exist and uh, almost have no no you know and, and, and control us and enslave us and, and chain us and uh, and, and and you know it's interesting that, that the book will be coming out probably when this thing this is still happening because it could, it could I don't know like if, if if one person got inspired you know if 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 my book was able to like reach one person and they were to say your book your book your book uh, did something you know your book has inspired me in a certain way that'd be fucking fantastic because you know I'd be I'm very humble to like show people parts of my book and I do it all the time I, I'm always like you know um offering 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 segments of my book to other people to, to read and you know and I want to be as good a writer as possible and I want to uh, illustrate my arguments as best as I can and I've been doing you know, I've been trying to work on the book and make it better and better for like four years or so and two years ago I was a fucking awful writer like absolutely awful and now I think I'm okay I think I'm pretty good no I mean I could be but I think I'm always reading it and going like that could be better that could be better that could be better and always changing it <coughs> but anyway back on topic um, we are witnessing without even without even my influence or my, my, my sort of you know you know I mean I, I, I don't of course not because I'm just one fucking guy who's just sitting in his house making podcasts but um, you know we are witnessing a um, a big conceptual uh, destabilization right where we are in the wake of the pandemic being forced to re-examine what it means to uh, to live a life and more importantly outside of luxury and safety and security and uh, it is really interesting you know because you know that we, we sort of we're sort of very unconscious a lot of the time, you know. Where we and, and I think it's due to like patterns of language because you know the dang, the language is preset, so to speak. I'm always shoddy at explaining the book. Well, when I write, I can write it, but I can't explain it for some fucking reason. But um, language is preset. We don't decide what language we we speak. We decide what words we use, but we don't decide on the meanings of the words. And most of the time, we don't decide on the social discourse of how to communicate. So as a result, we we are def we 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 we, uh, fo we blindly follow the way that language says, and then we perceive the world a certain way, and then act according to that perception. You know, we see chairs as things to sit on. We see tables as things to eat off of. We see TVs as something to voyeur and stare at. We see money as something to own for its own sake. We see work as something that you have to endure and suffer through in order to gain some, you know, sort of, you know, like a zero points game. You know, you, you know, you know, suffering is earning something because you've you've had to suffer through this meaninglessly. So then you can then you can gain the. Uh, you know, <clears throat> you know, you know, gain some form of, you know, more money or like, you know, career prospects or something, you know, I, I spoke to Nay about this guy that we know that is definitely doing that, he definitely suffers because he 
feels as if it's, he feels as, he feels it's worth worthy to suffer in order to you know gain gain some kind of kind of career prospect or you know it's more it's more like um, if you you know if you if you suffer then then you, it means you're doing something good even if even if the suffering is mean, suffering is meaningless you know I'll do a job that I hate but anyway back on topic um, and you see money as a thing that you a thing to own for its own sake rather than a a, bar, a, a, a negotiable negotiating tool to use in society um Check on this. I'm gonna check on the fire. We say. <clears throat> I've really got to check on that because that wood is not. I would have better not catch a wood over there. It's quite fucking scary. I'm not pushing these bits. Really nice having a fire. Really damn good. Um, but even like art and music, you know, because it's, it's it's not so simple to just talk about. You know, it's not so you know it's not simple. It's just like you know, work is this. Work is something you endure. Money is something you want for your own sake. There are all these underlying contexts and assumptions that aren't provable. <clears throat> that's the important thing they're not provable they are just assumptions like axioms like axioms of mathematics <clears throat> that uh that are in that are always coded within the word itself um so it's it, it it's a very good exercise to check on those assumptions but the real ethos of the book itself is to see that reality can be observed outside of these concepts that's the most important thing <clears throat> you know there is a experience of seeing the world as it really is and that's why the book is called the ecstasy of nothing okay i'm gonna open that um the ecstasy of nothing is the experience now yeah fucking no see i can i can predict it now um yeah, it's about eight i think eight beeps um, getting so getting sidetracked. Yeah, so seeing world outside of these concepts, you know, we we have glimpses of 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 these experiences, and may our, these experiences become the best experiences I think that we can ever have. Again, they're very ecstatic. They're very beautifying. They're they're sacred experiences. The experience of the ecstasy of nothing. This, uh, this, this whole world within the light of God. If you, if you're, if you're, if you're a theist, you know, just spirituality. If you're not, and just sort of like, just direct observation of reality. If you, if you're not spiritually motivated at all, and it's this, um, it's this beautiful experience of reality as you have forgotten about for such a long time, and uh, and 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 a lot of people will know what I'm talking about, but. 
a lot of people won't and it sounds really mystical and like gibberish and blah 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 but it really isn't it's, 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 it's just seeing reality for how it really is <clears throat> you know seeing seeing the seeing the wind seeing the trees seeing the chair seeing the table but not seeing it as a chair just seeing what the chair is it's like a different thing it's like but um <clears throat> you know i think the point i want to make about <clears throat> the point i want to make about this 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 situation is that um we i think i think with the dismantling of rigid conceptual frameworks gives us the ability to see the ecstasy of nothing more. We're going to, we, you know, we're going to. See, we, I think I really think that we're going to see the world more, and feel the world, and be in the world more. And that sounds really, pr uh, you know, profane. I think I think the word is not profane. That's not the word. Banal, maybe, maybe banal is the word. Maybe there isn't a word at all. Um, and it seems really banal to just say, oh, we're going to be in the world more, but with that comes so many possibilities on how to actually act as free agents. I was talking to a friend a few days ago, I think it was, when, I think it was Wednesday, it's Tuesday, 25th of March today now, or 23rd, 24th, I think, I don't know. Um, and he was talking about doing acid, LSD, and, uh, you know, he was just, he, he was looking at everyone, he was, in, he was in the tube station, he was looking at everyone going up the escalator, and they just decided to sit by the staircase and just be there, regardless of the sort of the conception, the, the frameworks of how to, you know, of, you know, all the assumptions behind what it means to be an escalator, and the, what it means to be an escalator is it means to go up, and it means to go up as quickly as possible without being dangerous, and it means to be a certain distance from people and it means to behave a certain way you know these are all coded in, in what an escalator is as an object you, you know in the lingual world you can't escape those sorts of experiences but when the non-lingual world as alex and his friend saw sorry i i, I, I won't give a, i won't give a surname <laughs> didn't mean to say your name man sorry <clears throat> um as as a as an anonymous alex uh, said um he was just able to sit on the staircase because he wanted to and it was his decision to do it outside of conceptual frameworks of of what it means to be a staircase in london uh, on a on a, on a tuesday at eight o'clock at night you know they're all they're all sort of they're all sort of got these codings of what it means to like to be those sorts of things <clears throat> and uh yeah he found he found some real he found some real greatness from the freedom to just sit at the staircase because he wanted to and he saw something about the staircase that no one else saw because every you know people were just using the escalator because it was the fastest mean of travel no one even considered to walk up the staircase let alone sit on the staircase and just talk <clears throat> you know they were they went there you know, they, went, they then went to uh get a get a tube you know but he then you know rather than just get the, the quickest one they said you know what we're going to wait until the right tube comes along and that sounds crazy to us, to to to, to the norm, you know, to someone that isn't experiencing that psychedelic experience. But <clears throat> it was clearly, you know, but the thing is, is that you know, there's no reason not to do that. There's no, you know, this, you know, I mean, you know, what is your moral foundation? You know, is it, you know, if it is freedom, then the freedom to choose to get on a tube that's half an hour late later rather than the immediate one is a freedom that we do not exercise at all in this culture we do we never exercise the freedom to do what we want in that respect because not because society tells us to because society isn't tell you know it isn't i mean it is i mean language is a social thing but <clears throat> it's not like the you know <clears throat> it's beyond that you know it's beyond relationships with other people it's also in our architecture and our own inhibitions of our language that that i think that's more that's the more accurate definition of the thing that compels us to be unfree you know when you look at a tube you are it is coded with you must guess on me to get to your destination as quickly as possible and you know and we, we follow it right and i'm just thinking like you know, you know if, if that was something that they found 
on that on that drug on that experience you know what what are all of these un unexperienced possibilities and opportunities of not you know of not following ling- rigid lingual and conceptual frameworks of you know i must get the tube i must go to this you know i must go to this concert because not only will i enjoy it but it'll also get me out the house more and it will also affirm me as a person you know what if it is freedom that is that is our that is our highest priority as creatures you know maybe it's love maybe it's happiness maybe it's peace maybe it's strength maybe it's adaptation maybe it's intelligence you know what it could be all of them but you know it certainly isn't conceptual frameworks that must be followed it certainly isn't lingual authority even authority might be that you know might have might have a very important value in society but lingual authority i don't know i don't agree i don't agree at all it was you know and i don't i don't think i don't think it is anyway i don't you know i really don't think it is but even if you are someone that is more on the on the, on the authoritarian side on in political systems <clears throat> you know that's still only the political system. What about your personal fr- what about your personal authority? Well, what about the authority that lives in your head all the time, you know? Authority beyond, you know, simply just going out and raging violent anarchy on everyone. What about when you're sitting and making a cup of tea? You know, are you free? Are you free to do are you free to make the cup of tea yourself? Do you know what I mean? It's like <clears throat> you know, are you make you know, what reason are you making the cup of tea for? Are you making the cup of tea because it's time to have a cup of tea? You know, or because you, you have an oral fixation? Um, you know, is it because, you know, is it because you need a caffeine fix? Because if you don't, then you know you're going to get anxiety from, or lethargia from not doing it. Is it because, you know, it's the, it's the, it's the time of day to do it? <clears throat> or are you having the cup of tea alternatively because you want to have the cup of tea? I hope that makes sense. And I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, and, and yeah, I mean, I think I write way better than I explain it, <coughs> but you know, I mean, you know, the, it, it it's definitely like. I think I think if I am getting through to people correctly, you know, then it is definitely something to consider. Are you doing it because you want to, or are you doing it because of the authority in your head, the lingual authority, you know, that compels, and and most of us don't even know that the authority even exists, you know, the authority, you know. The authority to wear the blue coat today because it's a Tuesday. I won't wear the green coat. I've worn that one for a week. It's time to, it's time to uh, change things up a bit to go to the blue coat. You know because I feel restless in my clothing decisions. <laughs> you know, are you doing that, or are you, doing, or are you wearing the blue coat because you want to? Because you want to wear the blue coat. Is it your decision? You know, because it's my decision to wear the blue coat. I'm thinking about myself personally here. Because I've got two coats that I swap between, and you know, it's good. And, and I'm always like reflecting. You know, am I am I wearing the blue coat because you know it, for some other from some other language or conceptual based decision, or am I doing it because I want to? <coughs> there's um, there's a there's a world of people that don't even know that the non-lingual side of the coin even exists. People that simply just follow the language, the lingual form of things and escape and escape and escape and escape. I had a friend talking to me yesterday about his fear of death and his, you know, <coughs> and his, lo- there were lots of things that sort of told me that he was very unfortunately bound by the unfree nature of language and its authority in your head. And by, you know, and I'm, I hope, I hope, what you're, I hope what I'm getting at now is by language it, <clears throat> it literally means so much more than just what words are. It, it, it's an entire net of perception on the world, you know, to divide things into chairs and tables and all of that. But there was a definite kind of, you know, the sort of linear kind of, you know, I want, you know, you know, he's, he's, you know, he's having a kid soon, and that's really cool, and I'm really, I'm really happy for him, and you know, and he's, you know, and and, and there are like, <clears throat> you know, there there are certain problems that he had resolved, you know, with, with like. With drinking and stuff, which I have, you know, which 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 I've sort of suffered from as well, and uh, you know, um, and yeah, it was just you know, but it sort of you know, it was kind of like definite kind of, you know, we we, we all have it, but you know, so I, I can just sort of spot certain kind of lingual fascisms, if that's a word, you know, on on you know, on someone, 
I can spot on myself like all the time. You know, I can always, I'm always like, you know, I've got a green tea now because it was the last one, and I was having a podcast, and I thought to myself, well, I might as well cup the, the green tea with the the podcast. Did I do it because I wanted to do it? I don't know. That's the question. And uh, you know what I noticed was that our lingual frameworks were so different. You know. <clears throat> because he was terrified of death because he saw life in a certain way with all these other lingual codes and I was I'm not afraid of death because I, I see well, I'm a little afraid but <clears throat> I, I'm not as afraid because I see life in all these sorts of ways you know um, you know I see I, I see life in a much more sort of vast kind of um, you know vast kind of like immediacy of life you know rather than this kind of journey that people do you know like that's one of the things that's one of the codings the assumptions link conceptual frame packages of life you know life is a journey and we're all going somewhere maybe it's a journey that never stops but it's a journey and it's a journey where we have to learn things and it's a journey where we have to become better people over time and it's a journey where we have to you know fought you know, in capitalistic societies it's a it's a, it's a it's a it's a journey where you have to uh <clears throat> you know make it make it make something out of yourself make something yourself and be strong and in communistic countries it's something you know it's just a, you know be comrades and do the cause you know and they're not you see what i mean they're not they they're all things that come inside the you know like a like a trojan horse you've got life coming along and then you've got all these other things that life says so when you someone says that's life that's a fucking violent that's a, that's an act of violence in my opinion you know that's life you know act of violence what do you mean by life? What do you mean by that? Why are you saying it in that context? What, what, what context are you saying it in? You know, oh, I got fired today. Well, that's life. What the fuck? What does that mean? You know, it's an act of violence, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah, act of violence because um, because you're 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 oppressing that person's perception of what life is. You're saying this is what life is. And then you with life, you know, you're obviously coming with that kind of like this is a journey. You know, you're reinforcing, you know, socially prevalent structures of what you call life you know you see what i mean yeah, it's uh it's damn it's it, it's damn frustrating because well you know I, I had this experience of the ecstasy of nothing when i was 20 as, as you as, 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 I, as i write in the beginning of the very beginning of the book so i've got itchy nose <clears throat> and um you know it was it was so it was the most it was i mean it was the most important experience of my life you know not because it was not because it was special in any way but because it was the first time i really realized everything that was happening everything was happening to me all of these moments where i had glimpses throughout my entire life of the of, of the real nature of reality <clears throat> and i finally you know fucking saw it all and i was like i see the trees i see the sky i don't see the little the trojan horse of like all the little things that come behind the tree old oh, trees should be grown more because we're right protect the environment trees are good trees are good things you know trees are trees produce crops you know trees get in the way trees are good forest walks i should go for more forest walks because that's what you know because forest walks are good for you you know forest walks are good for your Good for, good for your system, whatever that you know, whatever it is, not because you know, but I just, I just, it was none of that. I just saw the tree, and that was so much more important than any any moral narrative that you could drive behind the tree, even if the moral narrative helps you in some way, because it still reinforces that that kind of that perception of like, oh right, this I have to do something important in the world. I have to, or you know, or I have to do something unimportant in the world to counteract the importance. You see what I mean? It's like I have to do, you know, I have to do that. I have to do, you know. <clears throat> You see what I mean? Um, yeah. It's, uh, so you bring it back to the pandemic thing, you know. Like I said, don't panic because, you know, to get that perception back, this could be the gateway back into that sort of, back into perception of seeing the world again. And I had that on Sunday when I was just making a fire to make the fire. There was no, out there, there was no bigger game at foot foot because there because we were all had to we all had to be fucking like locked indoors we all had to avoid people we couldn't go to work you know jordan you know jordan was there because jordan and his girlfriend beer were there because we they couldn't be in london anymore because they were because they weren't allowed to leave their houses after a while because he thought london was going to go on lockdown then it was and beer couldn't go back to portugal <clears throat> and with all this is happening so much is halting economic halt stock market um Inability to leave your house, inability to go to the pub, inability to go to cafes, inability to you know to go to go to work in a certain way. 
you know, and it's just and and uh, you just make and and what's great about it is that I'm not saying that coronavirus itself is 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 a good thing. I mean, I don't think people dying innocently is a good thing. Of course not. But I'm saying that there's you know there's always there's always like. I think there's always an opportunity that can be found in a bad situation, however horrifying the situation is. <clears throat> I don't know. It's, it's interesting. I'm not sure I'm going to make this a bonus episode, merely because... I don't know. I feel like people... I feel, I feel, I feel like I've explained myself in a way that I normally don't. So it, w- it could be nice to sort of share what I've said with the world, you know, like as opposed to my my pledges, you know, who knows. But yeah, <clears throat> it makes you think in the wake of a pandemic, where, you know, if, 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 if these things can be altered, then anything can be altered. You see what I mean? And not just altered in a horrifying and a violent way, you know, it doesn't have to be that way, it doesn't have to be this violent, um, you know, everyone's against everyone, you know, we have the decision to decide, we have this, we have the freedom to decide what sort of situation we get out of it, and that plus a lot of responsibility, you know, but <clears throat> it's important to have that kind of responsibility, otherwise, you know, you're not being, a, you're not, you're not even, you're not living in the first place, I think Roy Masters, you know, says, what was it, as Alan Watts, you know, says, you know, commit you know i don't know i, I don't think it was in, I, don't, I don't think it was in the right context but you know you know people kill themselves very early on in their life and then they just wait you know they 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 they're dead the most of their life you know that's not living you know counting time is not living you know the, the people you know you see what i mean you're like you know if you're just doing it just to do it just you know, just because oh yeah, well yeah, everyone's got to work. That's life, you know. As opposed to taking the responsibility, having risks <clears throat> in building your own business, or you know, or breaking away from social trends, um, you know, or or, or this constant desire to be connected all the time, and uh, see what comes out of it, you know. And you don't know. That's the whole point. It's exploration. You don't you don't know what's going to come out of it. That's the whole point, and we're not explorers anymore. We've we, we've dis- we've discovered everything, haven't we? So, we haven't. That's the thing. We haven't. And I don't mean to sound like a you know like a like a blatant hippie when it comes to these sorts of things, but you know, I do think that I do I do think there could be some like serious discussion with other people later on in, in sort of you know exercising freedom in in these situations. And uh, freedom to be morally courageous, uh, even as well as freedom to you know do what you like and work where you like, you know, the freedom to be morally courageous, as opposed to you know merely following trends and you know what I mean. All right, I'm gonna use the bathroom. I'll be back in two minutes. And another cigarette, I think. But do I want to smoke because I w- it's my decision? Or is it not my decision? That's the question. And it's not like, you know, is it the language game in my head that puts it in, puts, puts the next cigarette into my head, or is it mine? And I haven't really got an answer for that, but it's uh, something to think of. You see?
get back on. perk up a bit in a sec um yeah my f my my friend who the guy that was afraid of death and uh drinking the guy that had a bit of a problem with drinking <coughs> um said that i, th I thought it'd be an interesting segue because it might it might be it might sort of it might relate back to sort of exercising freedom in a wake of like an emergency or a pandemic where those conceptual structures are are, bre are breaking of well, sort of like dismantling and destabilizing. Um, he said that I talk a bit mental. He said I was mental, right? He said, you know, and uh, I think I, I do, th and I was sort of, and I was sort of, I sort of wonder if my, if the way I speak sometimes can intimidate people. Not because I'm intimidating, but because like what I I sort of very, like, I very, very much like this is my opinion. Uh, I don't really think about it, and having psychosis sort of helps you with like not being insecure or self-conscious about those sorts of things, and just being like, you know, this is who I am, take it or leave it, you know. And I, I do worry. I, I do worry a little bit that people are going to like <coughs> be 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 uh, taken aback by my sort of opinions or whatever, because you know, you know, because it's, it's it's not the sort of light-hearted sort of speech, you know, sort of small talk that people are that people are comfortable, people are normally normally. Uh, expecting you know so but i want to talk about a little bit before i before i before i sign off so to speak i want to talk a little bit about how self-consciousness can really impair your ability to live freely and it can be really really helpful to not give a shit what people i mean it's, it's, I, I want to sort of because I'm, I'm just sort of spitballing, and I didn't prepare anything for this conversation, really. But <clears throat> I want to offer something a little bit more helpful that, I, from my own experience, that people can like use. Um, I think I think maybe careful inspection into what you are and awareness that you only have a certain amount of time is very. It, it can be very useful, as the, you know, when you when you when you're sort of thinking about what you're going to do in your lifetime and and what your what it's going to cost you to do other people you know i spoke to rachel on the overcoming addiction podcast about how important it is to uh oh, what was it i forget now it'll come back to me oh there we go um the importance of not caring what other people think in order to uh I mean, that was it, that was it, <clears throat> you know, if you want to do something in your life, people are always looking for some grand meaning or some grand purpose to their life, um, um, and I, th I think, I think, I think, uh, I think the answer is whatever, whatever you need to do right now is your life purpose, you know, and, and, and to a certain extent, you know, if, if, if you, uh, if you have a desire to, you know, to do something that's valuable to you and something that will give you happiness and joy and love and pleasure and freedom, then it is your life purpose to do that, you know? And it's not the set in, the thing about it is it's not a set in stone thing. It's not a monarchical purpose put onto you, right? Where the God King will give you a purpose because then you, you know, and it'd be horrible because then you'd have absolutely no control over what happens. And anything else that you do that isn't fulfilling that life purpose would become completely null. That, get rid of that. That relationship, get rid of that. That cup of tea, get rid of that. Your life purpose is to start this charity or to 
save this man's life or whatever and you become a cop what's wonderful about the purpose of life in reality is that it is always relating to you and your own experiences and what you want and it's always immediate you know it's immediate <clears throat> there's still a purpose you know it's still a purpose of life and it's still, it's still spiritual it still can be written in the stars it's just not monarchical it's democratic there's a democratic purpose of life the purpose of life to stop drinking to experience the world again i think that's my life but i think i think i think the majority of people's life purpose should be to experience the world again properly you know not to not to be guided by language and concepts you know thoughts not just thoughts because you know you can still you know you can still have thoughts of reality and you know i still have thoughts of my experience when i was 20 but you know the thought of you know i've got to go to i've got to do this because of some reason i just i just think i should for me you know as opposed to your decision is a very you know i think i think i think examining that whole thing is very important very important and uh and you know to, to bring it back and to sort of wrap things up a bit <clears throat> i want to sort of say that it's incredibly interesting to see what's going to happen with the pandemic and we're going to have a lot more freedom there's going to be a lot more freedom in our, in our lives and it's very important to really think about what you actually want in the world and if you want to be morally courageous and you want to do the right thing then you can't just do it easily you have to you have to really work on it and work out what your intentions actually are when you want to do the right thing what being the right thing is in any situation whether being the right thing is fight or flight you know in a situation where you and a loved one are in, are in danger if like god forbid some aggression breaks out on the streets from either from police or police and citizens or shopkeepers and sh customers or you know whatever it is <clears throat> and it's good to like you know have that freedom but let's not be so doom and gloom I, I think i'm a little different to to sort of manny's perspective you know just because things will change doesn't mean it's going to be bad even if things were much more visceral and much more immediately risking risky risky and uh <coughs> if you know what i mean by that you know you know, you know imme immediately you know costful and and and, and, and dangerous and perilous doesn't mean it's going to be bad you know even if you can't see it we just have the, we already have these structures on what it means to be costly and risky and all of that because we're still engaged in our own lingual frameworks you know even if you know even if anarchy broke out you don't you, you haven't got a way to prove that might that isn't that is not experientially better because you don't know what it's like you know i hope i hope, I hope i'm not being too brash when i say that because i don't want I, I i'm not a very i'm not a violent person at all and i don't want that sort of thing to happen but just because you know just because certain you know certain things aren't being fulfilled like consumerism and connectedness and convenience and commerce and capitalism all c words for, for some reason um doesn't you know and communism also another c word or, you know or whatever 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 whatever, 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 whatever system is being implemented you know in, in whatever country it doesn't you know just because those systems are breaking down doesn't mean and and, and th even if things become more difficult you know such as getting resources or living in spaces or heating or electricity and water just be, you know even if you know even if those things aren't being fulfilled as easily it doesn't mean that it, it doesn't mean that the whole whole the whole thing's objectively worse in fact it could be way better because we are seeing the world for what it is right we 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 are actually we actually are given a purpose and we are given the ability to enact our moral capabilities to be wonderful and 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 virtuous where we don't have that because we have everything we don't need to be morally courageous we don't need to be virtuous because we have everything in the western world especially especially like mainly yeah the best the western world we don't need <clears throat> to fulfill a life purpose because all we have to do is work for some pub and then we get everything we ever wanted and there's no reason you know there's no there's no drama you know you know what i mean by drama you know it's, it's not like a i don't mean by drama i don't mean this uh you know like eastenders or gossip i mean like drama i mean like <clears throat> a story to build you know like you know it's not that you know and a story has its own lingual you know trojan horses obviously but 
um, yeah, it's it, it, it's 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 very interesting. It's like you know, uh, and 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 you know, well, I want to say one more time, don't panic, and if you if you if 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 you're if you're taking the time indoors right now to reflect on your life then you don't need to panic because you're you you know because you're 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 doing what you need to do all right i'll end it there i'll have a lovely cigarette and enjoy the rest of the heat of the fire while i upload this onto youtube and um yeah i mean if i if i start off on a patreon i mean if someone watches it they can tell me if uh if it's worth, if it's worth putting publicly, if if it was like, a, if it was a discussion that people would would be interested in, would be kind of um, get a lot out of, right? As opposed to uh, just sort of a crazy, crazy guy in his mid twenties thinking he knows anything about how the fucking world works, <laughs> which I hope is not the case. All right, that's it for tonight. I'm James Rudin Waters. This has been Long Live Podcasts, and don't panic. You'll be all right. You'll be good. You'll be good. You'll be good. Things are not what they seem, and everything might change, but that's okay. Don't panic. Bye bye. <laughs>